This is the third in the series of the new Japanese restaurant that my friend Ben is the architect for. And something that they have used in their older restaurant is a little tray that holds the glasses of sake as they get delivered to the, to the table. They sent me this picture of what they currently use. They wanted something a little more rustic and that showed the wood a little bit more, something that wasn't painted. I've had these chunks of walnut in the shop for a while and they, they seem like the perfect size to make these little trays. So I sliced off one end of one of these chunks then jointed one of the sides to make it nice and flat. Then drilled three holes in the top to hold the glasses that would go on the tray. I sent a picture of this off to the, to the client and they came back that it was a little, a little too big, a little too rustic, and it needed the little overhang on the bottom so that you can pick it up off the table, which I then realized made perfect sense. The thing that I had made was very hard to pick up. So it was back to the drawing board, so to speak, or back to the big bandsaw. And I sliced off another piece of walnut. This time I cut this piece in half to make it a little smaller. And I cut a dado all the way around the bottom edge of the tray so that there was a space for your fingers to pick up the tray off the table. And I put some finish on it. Now there was something that was kind of in the back of my mind and I was kind of denying it as I was building this prototype. Now this prototype, the wood is all one piece, so that so the grain runs through the through the top piece and into the base, and it's all continuous. And I like that. But the thing that was going to be problem with this one is I still had the issue of when I drilled the holes, I got the little center divot from the Forstner bit, and I couldn't find a bit that didn't have the little center point. So the form on this prototype, I think was just about right, but I still needed to figure out how to do the holes. So it was back to the bandsaw. And this time the plan was to cut a thinner piece for the top and make that piece just for the top piece and do the bottom base piece as a separate piece of wood. So I, so I sliced up the top piece and got that ready. I would need a, a very smooth flat piece to glue the bottom to, so I, so I jointed one face of that top section and then drilled the holes through the top section all the way through. Then I had to make the base piece, which would just be a straight rectangular piece. Now when I put the two pieces together, the bottom of the hole would be perfectly flat. So I glued the two pieces together. And then a little clamping. And let it sit overnight. They wanted it a little rustic, but they also wanted to be able to clean it. So they wanted it a little rough, but not too rough. So I went over it with a sand sander with, I think, 220 sandpaper, just to kind of take off the burrs, but to leave the texture. And then some finish. And I just did a, a thick coat of polyurethane. So I then sent this prototype off to the client, and they loved it. So now it was production time. <laughs> I had to make 40 of these. So I slabbed up walnut chunks. And then from there, I could cut those in half. And then I moved them all over to the jointer. And I jointed one face to fit with the bottom piece. And I drilled the holes. And with doing this, I set up a stop with a center and then a stop for each side so that they would fall in the same place. I clamped my dust collection hose to the fence on the drill press. These holes being very big were making a lot of chips. I needed to get those out of the way really quickly. I couldn't resist stacking them up and then pushing them over. And I did a little sanding before the base goes on. And then it was time to make the base pieces. So I cut a piece of walnut lumber down into rectangular pieces for the bases. And then it was just a matter of gluing them together.
So I ran a, a bead of glue around the outside and then a little bit between the holes. And I started by putting the finish on, kind of pulling the finish out with the brush and, and sticking the, you know, the finish in the holes and kind of doing it the way I'd normally do it. But it ended up being quicker just to dip the end of the tray into the can of finish and then kind of spreading the finish around on the tray. That, that went a lot quicker. And then they were done and it was time to take them off to the restaurant. And we went back after a few months, the restaurant's done, and had some sake. It was really good. <laughs> and the trays were really nice too. Thanks for watching.